Well, this viewer says, I'd love for you to do a video showing how to make flower petals that bend and fold, meaning where to place the shadows and the highlights, how to make them bend, dip, roll over the edges, etc. Yeah, that's a tall order, but it only takes two things, direction and value. You know, we say these visual elements, uh, we teach them, and we'll teach them like a list, uh, line shape, value, etc., etc. But it doesn't mean a thing in the world if you don't know why or how it works, how each one of these works, in order for you to do stuff like this person asked for. So, in this particular thing that this person is requesting, you only need two, really, well, you need others too, but there are two necessary visual elements that do stuff that enable us to see things the way we see them. Direction is a very important visual element because it, it describes to us the tilt of things, enables us to see things folding and bending and stuff like that. So let me show you something. It's what we say here in the South. <laughs> let me show you something. Uh, let's just take this and I've got three different jonquils. I thought jonquil is a good flower to practice with. Uh, because it's got you know it's got pretty good uh, clear shapes and not so many thousands of little bitty petals that you you get all caught up in all that, but it's a good good image to practice from. Well, we have three different lighting situations here, uh, but the lighting situation is about value. So let's talk about direction first. Direction means the way an edge is tilting. So if if this part of the flower, or I should not if, the way we are looking at it, if this part of the flower is tilting in this direction, uh, tilting like this, that's a direction. And you make the line that tilts that way, and then you're on your way towards drawing the shape that you see. And that's true with these, these uh, petals that are tilting towards us that are bending and curling. I tried to find something that was doing all those things the person described. But if you have trouble with that, there's an, even, we have another tool we can use that would help us actually uh, define or help us a little bit more um, closely find that exact tilt. And that is our analog clock. Now I have a diagram and this is available on dyingminds.com. Uh, go in the menu, click on free stuff, and you'll find a diagram like this. And you can have a transparency printed, or you can get transparency if you have a printer. Print your own transparency that will enable you to um, locate and be able to identify direction. So let's look at that, and, let's, and then we'll, we'll actually do it. Uh, so the way the clock works is that 12 and 6 need to be aligned vertically. Never turn the clock like this. <laughs> when you're trying to find directions or angles, because you do, you change it. But if you align it like this, and then you put, you just uh, uh, change the position of the clock, not tilt it, but just move the clock around. You see the angle I was talking about? This direction, this shape, this edge right here? Now watch, it aligns with two. You see that? It, if I've got 12 straight and ver uh, 12 and 6 vertically and straight, it aligns with 2. And so that's half the information we need. The other half of the information is how long or how short we need to make that line. And we'll take every, we can take every edge like that and we can actually draw any shape we're looking at from any direction. One thing you need to pay attention to, if I were out in the uh, outdoors and looking at this flower, my position where I'm located would change that, would change this direction because if I'm up a little bit higher, I'll see a different tilt. 
and down a little lower, I see a different tilt. If I'm over to the right or over to the left, I'll see not only a different tilt, but I see a different length. So where you are determines how you see these things. Right, so those are things. But when you're when you're learning this stuff, it it really helps to work from photographs because you got it, uh, you've got it there. You, you it's not going to move. You're not going to move, and you can study it. All right, let's look at that. So what does that mean? If I then am doing a preliminary drawing of uh, of this flower, then I can take any color. Well, let's just reach over for. Let's see here. Let's reach over, let's get over here. I'll just reach over for a little bit of uh, something dark enough to see. In this case, I'll just choose a little violet because that was the color I happened to reach for. Now, I said 2 o'clock. The 2 o'clock direction is that. And now, if I make it that long to begin with, then all the other sizes or lengths are going to be related to that. So that's the first step. Any line, and I suggest that when you first start learning how to do this, I suggest you find an edge that's easy for you to find and easy for you to draw. Of course, you can change that, and I'm going to make that just a little bit shorter. So I'll just take away a little bit of it right here. Make that just a little bit shorter. There we go. Uh, now, what about the one on this side? Now, you don't assume that it's going to be the same if it's uh, edges on either side of a shape. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. But we can see with our bare eyes that this one is moving in the same direction as this one. So, we just do that. And so we would put that about right here. And there we go. Now we've got a beginning for this. All right. Here's where the fun part comes in. Really fun part. When you can go to parts where those petals are turning and twisting. Because you can find the petal, you can find that shape without having to have formulas or without tracing. And I detest the tracing thing, but that's another story for another time. Uh, but let me show, let's show you how that works. Now, first we'll need to see where, how is it connected. So it's connected right here. And what is that angle? All right. And for those of you that are going to complain about it not being spontaneous enough, spontaneity comes after you know something, after you know how to do something. You learn the skill, it becomes automatic, and then it's spontaneous. But when we're first learning to a skill, just like learning to drive a car, we're always very deliberate so that we can be sure we learn that skill in a way that makes it work for us more sp spontaneously. All right, so let's go back here. Now... Where, what is this direction or angle? What is that? So I'm going to just move the clock around until I find it. And where is it? There it is. It's, it's not quite 4 o'clock. Well, then that's okay, too. Because it's a little bit before. We could call that, we could call it 4.15. You see, it's the, it's the tilt that is closest to the number that will guide you in that direction. And that's this this portion right here and so then we could do that and let's get just a little bit more juice on the end of the brush here and 454 it should be right there and then we look here now you see now we're going to start working with that petal and you can see that the petal and this is what enables you to see it coming toward you and bending is the way you create that direction and so You'd look there, and another good way to do that is you just take the edge of your brush and align it with it. Now you know that you can refer to the clock, and you can refer to it mentally, but you can see that direction tilts a little bit to the right, uh, to the, uh, yeah, right of, five, of six, kind of in between five and six. So, and you see it in comparison to the length, it's about the same length of that. So then we could do that. So with that connects about right there. It tilts like that and then look at the other edges that direction turns this direction turns and moves this way and it turns and moves that way that's a little bit more towards three you can also say this way and that way when you learn to locate those things and you see it's it's a short short 
length or a short direction. It's not as long as this. And then you look at the how it, what happens below it in that shape, and we will put a little bit of, of um, more, more juice on the end of the brush and come down a bit. I get my hand here to guide me and make that like that. And then you that see you see that that then will connect on the end there like this does, and then you see another part. So when a single petal like this is bending and turning in the way the, the viewer described, it, it also separates itself into several little parts. It's not just one thing anymore. So we find those little parts. We enable the edges of those parts to move in the direction they're moving. And that's what we do with our brush or our, or our pencils. And so you can see that. And then we have the little part that is behind it here. And that part that's behind it there. What does it do? It says something like that. And it goes out like that. The part at the bottom does something like this. Comes around something like that. Picks up a little bit right there. And the part on the edge here does dips in something like that. Moves like this. Then moves up like that. Let's get a little bit more juice on the brush. Okay, then we connect this shape, and let's get my hand up here so I can see what I'm doing, and connect that shape, and you see there we've got a very close resemblance to what we see there. The next step, when once you have the, the, the shapes, and well, let's put, let's put just a little bit more here so all that can make sense. I see the relationship of that does come more like that, so now take this away right here. Okay, now, the next thing is what the viewer asked for. How do you know where the shadow goes? The shadow is going to, uh, the shadows are going to be placed according to how the light is striking it. So, <clears throat> you see here, the shadows in it are striking, are, are, are located in a different place than here. This one and this one, the light is mostly behind it and up to the, uh, kind of up to the right there. And there's, there's no light catching here, so all this is falling in shadow. You see, this one is, is mostly backlit, or they, they've kind of fiddled with the light there just a little bit. But it's a very subtle shadow. You see the shadows are more in front, and the light's catching more like that. So you look for that in terms of where the light's hitting and what kind of shape is being created. And so if we were going to, to do that part of it then, we would uh, then need to move towards the color, what this color do, and I'm just going to keep it simple here and keep this with two complementary colors, yellow and violet. Just show you just a little bit about uh, about how you work the light in shadow. Uh, and so I'm working on this one, so which is kind of strange. So that shadow is kind of dark. All right, here we go. Uh, when you're working with two extreme complements like yellow and violet which are out of the tube colors usually yellow is very light and the violet will be very dark that means if you add too much of the violet into the yellow you're going to turn it dark too quick uh, and we know that shadows are easily achieved when we use a complement to do the darkening rather than using uh, black or gray or something like that all right, so what I like to do is just to flatten out that dark like that so I can choose how much of that color I'm going to pick up. And I'll pick up just enough with the edge of the palette knife and mix it into the yellow. And you can see, see I have control. So there I've just barely changed the value of it. But by doing it this way, I have control of the amount of, of uh, purple that I put into the yellow or purple violet both the same thing. You see now this begins to fall into a very shallow uh, shadow value. And if I hold it up to here, you see uh, it's a little bit darker than that, but you see I'm pretty much in the same value range as I am uh, as this one is. So let's let's do that part first so that it makes a little bit more sense. And I will just pick up the shadow with my brush. Pick up, I'll pick up a little bit more of that now that I've shown you how that works. Pick it up just a little bit more with my brush and check that shadow value. 
all right and that shadow value actually goes about right in here and so then I just brush that shadow value on this is rep this is about placing she says shadows now I think when someone asks me a question about shadow I always like to ask Chris what kind of shadow are you talking about are you talking about a form shadow or a cast shadow a form shadow is the shadow that's actually on the form the cast shadow is is caused by something blocking the light and so here this seems to be more of a cast shadow because it seems like the lights being blocked and this seems more like a form shadow because it, it the the image is the light striking right here and the image is moving away from the light that's the way form shadows behave so for the moving out of the form shadow she said I think she said shadows and lights and so moving it out of the sh the form shadow and into the light we simply pick up a little bit more of the yellow like that and this is very simplistic so it's just to give you an idea of how you can make this work for you I'm seeing I'm picking up some of that line down there we don't want that line in there so I'll just get rid of it so there we go and then a little bit of the white into the yellow and we create a stronger light right here something like that and we have a stronger light right there on the edge now so that gives us what we see right there what we're seeing in here is a little bit more contrasty so let's put just a little bit more of the violet on the palette so we have a little bit more to choose from them flatten it out so I can control the amount that I pick up now all those are wonderful hints for technique or procedure uh, in helping you to mix color because a lot of times you'll get the you'll be mixing the right colors together but you will your proportions will be off because you didn't gauge the amount you picked up and and you won't be getting the value of the color that you really need all right so I'm going to uh, move in a little bit more aggressively now into the violet come up here now you can see now how much darker that got with that additional uh, that uh, additional amount of violet added into the yellow see that gets very very dark and then I can pull more yellow into it to lighten it let's hold the brush up here and see am I in the right I'm a little bit dark still let me pull just a little bit more of the yellow and now let's see about that cast shadow so the cast shadow is right there and I just place it right here and I'll pull the brush down in the shape of the cast shadow that I see which is that shape right there then I see another cast shadow or that's a yeah it really is more more maybe combination of cast and form that I see right there in that little spot so that's about right there so I'll put that right there now I've just almost got uh, the thing set to have that bending um, the bending and tilting and whatever else the viewer said uh, added to the equation all right so let's go now into the yellow let's see what else we need there we need a little bit uh, darker right in this area right here that too is value so this is the value part what I did earlier was the direction part so you get your directions and the length of the directions right and connected in the right places and then you look for where those values are and you get the degree of values placed in the right places it's, and then you've got what you're looking for all right so I'm going to add just a little bit get that just a little bit darker a little bit of that violet and fall right up in there and let's just let uh, the brush sort of hug that and let it kind of blend in with that the uh the shadow part right there let's see where that does that go it just goes right there then we're going to move into the light so i'm going to pick up a little bit of the white and add to the yellow because the light is getting much lighter there so when i say light we mean a light a light color a light value and so we can pull that lighter value right in here and let the brush move in the same direction that you see the edge is moving so if you let the brush put the brush down and let it move with the edge let the brush turn when the edge turns then it makes the whole thing uh, more alive so we can do the same thing on the other side right here and we begin to now we get that and I believe that might come around just a little bit like that 
and then we get the same thing going on where do we see that down here I could have made yeah I need to make that shadow just a little bit wider let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to reach back into the shadow value and let's just extend that right out here a little bit more wipe the brush wipe that off the brush go into the liner value and okay so now this is the liner value that's right next to the shadow so I'm going to give that a slight little blend between those two and then let's wipe the brush to get that shadow color off then the Add a little bit of the white to that. And let's see what we get. So I'm going to start at the petal, the edge of the petal, and pull it up. Pull the light into it. Start at the edge of the petal here. Pull it up into it. And blend those. Didn't get quite enough paint, so I didn't cover that mark. Blend it right here. Blend the edges out right there. You don't want that drawn mark to show through so I might have made a bit a little too aggressive, aggressive there so there now you can see we begin to get that feeling of the petal turning and we can see that better here more emphasized because it has all that dark value behind it so let me just do a little bit of something here just I'm just this, this is uh, just to show you what a difference the uh, value the value that's, that's behind it makes and so I'll just trim that off a little bit there and kind of pull that down there just throw some dark value behind there so that you can see that uh, how that works pull it out like that and we'll put some more up here and I'm paying attention to the to the to the direction of that edge of the negative negative and positive negative space is a space around the image positive space is a space occupied by the image and then up here that same direction of that negative space is the direction of the edge of the flower because it's what's creating that space and so we we'll pull that up there and you can see now it makes it much easier to see so I've only gone through a portion of that let's see I need to give it a little bit more emphasis just a little bit more emphasis right there kind of overshot right in here there we go let's give it now we we'll go and now you can see that feels like the petal is turning and you will find that when you are in the process of doing any kind of flower or it doesn't matter what you're drawing if you pay attention to where the direction how the direction of the edges are turning how long they are and then the value of course the color counts but the value counts more than the value of the color then you will be able to create any edge you see. So I suggest you just practice this. Don't try to make a painting out of it first. You know, get some scraps and, and practice uh, just looking for that. It's just finding those parts and putting those parts together. And I think you'll discover that you have got the key now how to draw. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.